fertile fields of eastern England have long sustained the cereal crops needed to make that elixir of medieval life, ale, vast quantities of it must have been produced and drunk. But how is it made and what did it taste like? We catch up with some archaeologists on a quest to answer those very important questions. We now make our way back east to the coast of North Norfolk and the village of Sedgeford. With Roman influence waning, a new culture started to emerge in early 5th century Britain, a culture linked to Germanic tribes across the North Sea and incomers bringing with them new habits and customs. In 2013, archaeologist Dr Ellie Blakelock found a settlement after a geophysical survey revealed intriguing evidence in the corner of a field in Sedgeford. Since then, an annual summer dig for volunteer archaeologists has been helping piece together what once happened here. We found some hot spots that suggested that there was some form of hot working process. We originally thought it was going to be iron working, but when we actually excavated and started working on the site, we realised quite quickly that they were nothing to do with metal working. They were something else. In fact, Ellie had discovered an industry of a completely different kind. It turns out this massive site was part of a huge malting operation used to make the vital ingredient for the most popular drink of Anglo-Saxon times, ale. What we have here is we have a steeping tank. Now, this is a clay-lined structure, and we think that there were originally sides to it here and another one that's actually on this side here. Steeping the harvested grain in this water tank was the first step of the malting process. And what you do is you lower your grain into this water and it soaks into the grain and it starts the germination process, which is so important for the beer making process. Buried in the ground, Ellie's found evidence of tools that show what a large scale operation this was. And what we have here is we have a wonderful iron hook and they would have used that to lever the grain into the water and take it back up again. The soaked grain was then spread across this clay floor to continue germinating. So waiting for the little shoots and the little rootlets to start forming in the grain and that tells them that it's starting to build up sugars and starch and that is what's really, really useful and important for the malts and for, for actually creating your beer. At least five kilns have also been found on the site. These would have been used to dry the malted grain, stopping germination. One reveals an incredible link to the maltsters of the distant past. But what's really remarkable about it is you can actually see the fingerprints and smears of the Anglo-Saxons from when they actually repaired the kiln. And it's so nice to be able to sort of almost touch and feel the people in the past. In a fascinating effort to reveal even more about the ancient Anglo-Saxon malting process here, PhD student Hannah Caro is using a flotation tank to separate out burnt grains unearthed at the site. Right, so here we have a bucket of sediment from the north end of Kiln 2. I'm just going to put some of it into the tank here. Um, burnt seeds which are light float to the surface of the water and then they collect in the bucket and you can begin to see a piece of some charcoal and some seeds down there which is exciting. Hannah can now identify exactly which cereal grains were used to make the malt using a microscope. So quite excitingly these grains are 1200 years old from the middle Saxon times so we've got here there's a, a big barley grain quite badly damaged down there so this is a wheat grain this is the most common wheat grown today and also in the Anglo-Saxon period. And lots of rye, the most common kind of grain at Sedgeford. It's unusual to find a site with such a high proportion of rye. So that's interesting. The discovery of these three cereal crops has led archaeologists to one conclusion. We find all three types of grain, the rye, the wheat and the barley, in pretty much every single sample from Sedgeford, 
which potentially suggests that they were being grown together in one field um, and harvested together and then malted together to make beer which was made from all three types of grain. The high proportion of rye is unusual in British malting and it could say something about the ancient ale makers of North Norfolk. The fact that we've got the rye here does suggest that, that link back to their ancestral homelands where they're using rye on a more regular basis and it probably suggests that what's happening is the Anglo-Saxons have brought across their technology um, for beer making and for mould making and what we're seeing is sort of, sort of the continuation of that process. <laughs> Perhaps the best way to understand the effect of using all that rye is to brew some ale with it. Dr Stuart Pryor has come to meet an expert home brewer to get a taste of the past. Now, I like an ale as much as the next early medieval archaeologist. So understanding the Saxon brewing process feels like perfect experimental archaeology to me. Hi, John. Hello, Stuart. Nice fire you've got going. I understand you're a Saxon brewing historian. Yes. I've done a few early medieval brews based on the best part of six months of evenings in the Imperial College and Science Museum libraries, exploring various old books and reference books referring back, and came up with um, an idea of some recipes. You've got some beer for me to I try? I have indeed. I've had some just here. Excuse the container. OK. This has travelled a bit, so it's got a bit cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> John's research led him to create an Anglo-Saxon ale recipe that, unlike the Sedgeford blend, uses plenty of barley, but zero rye. The barley ale is flavoured with honey and a plant the Anglo-Saxons found on riverbanks and marshes, bog myrtle. God, that's not bad, is it? <laughs> it's a nice that's brew. That's not bad. Wow, that's actually really sweet. It is. The honey does that. It's not meant to get you drunk, it's meant to be a nice, pleasant drink. It is pleasant. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised at how good it is. <laughs> John's going to recreate a beer based on the unusual grain ratios found at Sedgeford. 10% barley, 20% wheat and 70% rye. So this is the rye. Yeah. Two-thirds rye, yes. So two-thirds rye. Yep. Yeah. And here is crushed rye. Rye is much more unusual in brewing. This makes the product. Yes, if you smell that, it's got a really arom aromatic smell to it. it smells like, well, beer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that will infuse into the liquid. We put it with the water and the flavourance. And that would have made a fairly good beer? or? Fairly... I'm not sure. As I say, I've always done single brews. So it'd be interesting to see what it comes out like. Next, John has to steep his mix of crushed grains. So you've got your three grains. I have indeed. There's the rye. There's the barley, and here's the wheat. You can do that simmer now for about an hour and a half to two hours. After cooling and fermenting for four days, John's experimental Sedgeford rye ale will be ready to drink. But in another time-honoured tradition, here's one he made earlier. It's definitely drinkable. Um, I prefer it to water, but it's, yeah, it's very earthy. Very early. Yes, it would need flavouring. So this is a good way of, of, of protecting your health as well as uh, as well yep. as pr providing. And also, a... boiling it would kill off any parasites the water has picked up through storage, or whatever else. Of course. I'll just try it again, just to make sure. It's going to taste nicer the more I've drunk. <laughs> as the night goes on, <laughs> yeah, certainly. Whether or not the Anglo-Saxons knew it was the boiling that made their beer safer to drink than water, it's fascinating they malted their grain on such an industrial scale at Sedgeford. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> the rye-rich brew isn't quite as Moorish as John's sweetly flavoured Anglo-Saxon barley ale. It's definitely strong. <laughs> but at least it's not going to kill me. Thank God I'm not driving home. Anglo-Saxon digs.